Kia ora, Alan. Thanks for having yeah. us at um, Kiwi Art House Gallery. I'm here with Alan Aldridge. Um, I was wondering, we're, we're standing in quite a distinct building, um, mm. and I wonder if you could talk a little bit about this building. Is the know? history of the building? Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Well, this, this was a, a building owned by the Tonks family, who are a very important family at this end of town. They had a lot of buildings and a brickworks up here. Uh, it was built about 1900, um, and it started off its life uh, as a, this, the shop area started off its life selling dyed calico. Oh. Mm, the dyeing vats were out the back. Uh, and so it's had a, a long history of 100 years as, as a retail premise. Um, for a lot of it, I don't know exactly, I think it was involved with clothing. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know that from 1970, it was a, 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 a knick-knack shop owned by Carmen for three years, the famous Carmen. Uh, and then by uh, Mr. Smiles for 25 years, who a lot of people will remember. Uh, so, so that's sort of the history of the building. And then how did you come to have a business in this space? Like how did you come to have a gallery in this space? Well, uh, I, I was looking for a space, because my intention was to start a small gallery. And uh, I came across it by chance, really. And it was being renovated. Uh, it had been derelict for about 10 mm -hmm. years because when they were putting the motorway in, or when there was an argument over whether the motorway should go in, all this upper Cuba Street area was neglected. Uh, so the owner of the building who had bought the building and had a history of restoring old houses, he was working on this and completely re restored the space. In fact, enlarged the space, the original space we only went halfway, mm -hmm. and there was a wall halfway down here and a doorway there which went upstairs. So the original shop was very small, just this front yeah. half. So he doubled the size of it. And, uh, and he was looking for a tenant, so I came along at the right time. So. And had you always worked in, as, uh, as, in galleries? No, or? no, no. That was the first time. I, I'd uh, always been interested in art and, and involved in some way, but um, I hadn't run a gallery. Mm. Uh, but I'd, uh, I'd, I'd basically, I'd been... Um, the business I was working for had been bought out by an international company and was making people redundant, so mm. I was looking for something new to do. And what do you think it was about running a gallery and uh, working with artists? Like, well, well, I always always loved art, and, yeah. um, and I, so I thought, well, that's an area of interest, and so um, I sort of took it from there. And, and yeah. And do you, think, um, do you think the work here reflects your... Um, like what you what you love. Like uh, how do you how do you yes, decide? Well, you, like, you, you have to. Uh, I think you have to show work that you love. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, the the, the work, work I show is is really diverse. I sort of run it as a salon in a way, an old style salon, but I also mix that with exhibitions. So I'll yeah. have some of the space set aside for an exhibition, and the other side to a variety of different artists, um, and they all sort of compete with each other, and the styles compete with each other. Um, for space, <laughs> like, like they're arguing with each other, the different different paintings. But um, but yeah, so that's how I decided to to, to work the space yeah. out. And like I think the other day when we were talking, we were talking a little bit about who buys art here, and you said mm. a great thing about yeah. Do yes. you want to talk yeah, a little right, bit okay, about yes. that? Yes. Well, so, so I really aim um, for the. The, the aim as part of the market, you could say, that I'm going for is, is really people who want something really quality and nice for their homes mm. rather than a real collector's piece. So even though I have artists who probably are collectible, mm. um, the, the, my, my main aim is to provide something nice and not too expensive but also really good quality. Mm. And so some of the artists I have here are quite, quite well known in their own right, but they're, but they're also you know, accessible. Yeah, and like it's a beautiful idea to think of all of the work going and sitting in people's houses. Yes. Um, Tatiana um, is exhibiting at the moment, mm. and I wonder when did you start um, sort of exhibiting her work? Uh, I've, I've exhibited her for I think about four years. I've, I've had one other exhibition for her a few years ago, and that was her portraits, because she's a, quite a well known mm. portrait artist as well. Um, and. Uh, yes, yeah, so I have had a relationship with her for a few years. Mm. Mm. And I mean, um, were these sitting, th these are new since lockdown? Yes, finished, yes. So, so this exhibition is um, because she created a lot of work during the lockdown. Mm. Um, it's very impressionistic, fast style, a, bit, a little bit different for her because she's normally a bit more careful with her work. Mm. Mm. But these are done a lot more um, a lot more quickly, perhaps, than normal. 
um, but they have a very freshness and immediacy to them, which is yeah. great, and uh, people really like that. A little bit of a contrast to her, to yeah. her other work. So um, yeah, so so she created all these um, during the lockdown, wow. which is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Four or five weeks um, worth of work. Yeah. And uh, and so we decided to hold the exhibition. And, yeah. yeah. And it's a really nice way to um, sort of open again, eh? Yes, it was. It was and something that's relevant to what's been going on. And, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It's really beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Ellen. Okay. That was amazing. Thank you. Excited to be with you, Tatiana. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, I am wondering how long you have been exhibiting in this space, like how many exhibitions you've had in the Kiwi Art House Gallery. I think I've had a solo and a couple of uh, exhibitions with uh, with other artists. Yeah, mm. so several group shows, and yeah, it's been a few years, probably. At least three or four years now. Mm, yeah. yeah, so it's been a great relationship. Awesome. Yeah. And this work in particular that you're showing, um, I was just looking at the hourglass and I was thinking about <laughs> how time moves <laughs> or yes. has moved over the last little while. Could you talk a little bit about this this collection? Sure, yeah. So uh, most of these are done uh, during lockdown, some just immediately before or after. But this is the the lockdown body of work. Um, so of course I was very limited in terms of my space and the different materials and subject matter and even the lighting that I'm normally used to. Um, I, I didn't have that. So this is all done in a corner of the house with coordinating it with window light when the sun comes away from the window or maybe even venturing out outside um, as it is the case with our glass and the coffee pot and just uh, enjoying some of the beautiful fall moments that we had uh, in April. Uh, yeah, so definitely there are a few things that are different for these paintings that they would be for my normal work. Uh, mostly with my normal work being a little bit more resolved and a little bit more planned with a consistent uh, light source and here uh, because a lot of the items were <clears throat> sort of foraged and found they were fast moving, fast living, fast dying sort of things my uh, amount of time that I could dedicate to that was also very limited because I'm having to watch two children and cook food for four people every day. Uh, yeah, so my little bits of two to three hours in the afternoon, they had to become something. So the work in, in several instances is faster, maybe just a little bit more expressionistic, uh, but still with the same method, of course, and approach that I take to my work. Uh, but yeah, just, just having different things to play with, um, I say the outside lighting is really interesting because the shadows are very fast moving and the light is not subtle at all. It's just really blasting that, that sun. So you have the beautiful kind of coolness of the blue shadows that take in the sky and then um, the, the background or the backdrop of Wellington in the background, of course, is obvious. Um, yeah, and as far as time, it was very short in one way because I had very limited amount of time to work with but then it was also very uh, kind of long in, in, in other ways or not not long enough I suppose when, when, when that came <laughs> about but the hourglass I guess is about time being long as in being out of place or, or out of your comfort zone or out of your routine so that's where the the length <laughs> comes in. So the hourglass is that passage of this, the lockdown days tickling away, <laughs> <laughs> trickling away, yeah. I just love the way that um, these capture the moment and technique as well as in um, the subjects, you know, the, this mm -hmm. idea of foraging. And, and um, I was just thinking there are some elements in here that we wouldn't automatically think of in the tradition of still life if you know what I mean like you know there are some you know, um yeah and sure. I just could you talk a little bit about that there's some very New Zealand kind of um fauna in here yeah I mm. don't know yeah yeah well I'm, I'm glad you're noticing that because it's um 
it's really hard to be an artist that somebody can attribute to sort of any place and any time because then that takes away from the uniqueness and recognizability of your style. So I do want to be appreciated as somebody who is living in New Zealand now and seeing these things uh, because that is my perception of my life and my my place in the world at the moment. So I'm glad you're you're seeing that. Uh, but I um, that that's kind of what I love to paint because for me I think anything can be a painting and there's beauty in everything uh, and there are particular things that speak to me so the flowers and the, the little things that I notice on the walks mm. um, the dead butterfly and or life butterfly <laughs> the snails and the little out of season fox gloves and the kinses that somebody was just tossing on the side of the road. They just they probably had a tree, they don't know what to do with it, they just dumped it. <laughs> uh, but for me, they're just treasures because the shapes are interesting, the smells are wonderful, and uh, you know those little blackberry things that people cut away and throw away. Yeah. I thought they were just the most fascinating little bunches of, uh, of color and how uh, shapey, and uh, concrete the berries are versus the airiness of the flower. So for, for an artist who spends their time just looking and looking and looking, this was perfect because that's, that's all I was doing. Um, and then having the proximity of our beautiful bush and all of these plants, uh, yeah, it was of course a big bonus, so I loved it. Oh, thank you so much. I just, yeah, I'm just so in love with them. Yeah, I love the different textures and they're just magnificent. Thank you so much for your work. Thank I you, really Pip. appreciate it. Oh, Cheers. pleasure.